What's up everyone, TypeScript 4.9 is out and it brings a few new features that I'm really excited to talk to you about. Let's go. We've got a blog post by the OG Mr. Daniel Rossenwasser. I'm actually sure how to say his name, but we've got a bunch of new features here to look at. The one that's causing the headlines is the Satisfies operator, which is an, a new operator in TypeScript that lets you do some really smart things. We've got some big improvements to narrowing down types of different objects, which I'm like really, really excited about. Some other stuff too, to do with like auto accesses and classes, some improvements on checks and equality. We've even got some like performance improvements, which I'm kind of excited about. And actually this file watching now using file system events, I think might be like a, an interesting one to watch. This one is kind of like a quite a big change because TypeScript before used to rely on polling for watching individual files. Now polling, what it means is like you're polling the file every so often to just check if it's changed. This means you're not relying on sort of file system events or listing or anything, but it scales kind of badly when you have lots and lots and lots of files in your project that all need to be watched at the same time. It says here that generally speaking, a better approach is to use file system events. It means that you're actually just sort of saying to the system, okay, I want to just know about changes to these files and just let me know when they've changed. Instead of constantly checking on your child, you're actually just letting the school handle them and call you if there's an issue. I'm really interested in this change in particular because it has the potential to really speed up TypeScript on large projects. Like especially if you're using a monorepo or you've got a big thick kind of node modules thing. So if you're using TypeScript 4.9, I'd love to hear what your experience is with this if you've noticed any speed ups. Because remember, TypeScript performance impacts how fast your VS code feels as well, which is crucial to your developer experience. I'm so excited for unlisted property narrowing with the in operator. I really, really am. I've come up against this like several times and I'm so glad they fixed it. Its main use case is here. Imagine if we have a function which is like, we've got a package.json, which is like here in the package.json, and we're trying to get the package.json name. Now, we don't want to assume anything about the package.json shape. I guess we could do something like name like this, but really it could be kind of anything. And like, this is for situations when you really don't know what's being passed in and you want to extract out the information. So, so far in this function, we're doing a pretty good job. We know that package.json exists and that it's an object. And so we end up with package.json being an object here. But it currently also doesn't have a name property on that object, it's just any object. I can add a check here, which is if name in package.json then return package.json.name, but in TypeScript 4.8, it's still not quite understanding that this is gonna be an object with a name. So you would sort of have to do this, you would have to say as name string in here to really get it across. But now that I've switched it over to the latest version, the nightly version, then what we can do is we, if we don't even need to change any code, we just say if name in package.json, then it actually returns package.json and it's no longer an object, it's an object and something with a name attribute. So we get autocomplete here, which is amazing. And name is currently typed as unknown. But if we say and type of package.json.name equals string, then it's going to be inferred as a string instead. This is a major, major upgrade in these kinds of use cases because it means that you can actually dive really, really deep into objects, kind of recursively figuring out what's inside them. It's really, really cool. TypeScript 4.9 brings support for auto accesses in classes, which is an upcoming feature in ECMAScript. So what you do is you can just declare accessor name string here and it generates all this stuff for you. It generates a kind of like hashed attribute here, which is name. You get a getter for the name, you get a setter for the name and inside the constructor, well, it sort of just repeats what you've got in the constructor. Pretty nice. Finally, let's talk about the satisfies keyword. Oh, it's so exciting. This is the example from the TypeScript docs. You have a palette here and inside the palettes, you're basically saying, okay, we've got red, green, and blue. And each of these properties can either be expressed as a sort of string hex here or as like an array or a tuple rather of numbers. But the annoying thing here is that when you actually go to access this, like palette.red.lastindexof, it doesn't let you do it. 
even though we know that palette.red has is like an array here. And so we should get access to all of the proper methods here, like filter and things like this, but we don't. We just only have access to the methods that are common between array and string, like slice and length and that sort of thing. This is kind of frustrating because we know what this type is because we've just declared it just there. And the issue with this is actually the type annotation. Now, if we remove the type annotation, these errors go away. But what it means is we can actually like get this wrong and type it in the wrong way. And we'll actually end up with the incorrect type here too. So we're kind of like in a catch 22 where you can either make this one safe by providing it a record and here now it will catch an error there. But if you do that, then it means that when you access it, it will be kind of like dodgy. The reason these are erroring down the bottom is because technically palette.green is a union between string or RGB because that's coming from here. TypeScript isn't being smart enough really to say, okay, I'm going to actually infer the actual type you defined. And you can kind of avoid this if you want to by just sticking it inside a conditional check here. The same is true of arrays if you want to. You can say array.isArrayPalette.red, then you get access to actually all the methods here like filter and for each and stuff. But if only there was an operator or a way of defining this type that would let us be type safe here and here. Turns out there is, it's the satisfies operator. So what you can do is instead of declaring this up here, I'm gonna switch this over to the next nightly version. And what I'm gonna do is instead of defining it with the colon, I'm actually going to define it using satisfies record blah, 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 blah. Now, this is really cool because I actually do still get um, like autocomplete here and it warns me if I put the wrong thing in. So if I just put in like a number here, then it's going to yell at me. Whereas if I put actually the thing that was here before, then it's gonna be happy. Now I can actually remove this all of these if statements and it's going to infer the proper type for the thing I defined. Same with this string down here. This means if you hover over palettes, you actually get the specific type of what you declared there. Whereas before, if we have this record and I just stick it there, then this is actually inferred as the record type that's put onto it. This means that you can use satisfies in a really narrow range of cases when you want to make sure that this is type safe but also if it's like a union for instance or it's a complex shape you want to make sure it's kind of all solid here when you actually access it you want to make sure that you have inference on the thing that's actually defined this is really really useful for frameworks like next or remix or anything that uses this sort of pattern in next you have a function called get server side props which you can use to grab props from the server side which will then be put as props into your component there's also this really really smart kind of like type helper here called infer get server side props type which takes in your actual function and then returns the type of props that are actually going to be passed there. This means that in theory you get kind of like perfect synchronization between the props that are actually being returned and the stuff that gets pumped into your component. But it usually doesn't work that way if you define it like this. You have get server side props here which is basically like uh, this function has to conform to that type which means that you get autocomplete on like not found, redirect, that sort of thing. You also get autocomplete on rec and res and oh actually not res it's just rec isn't it oh no sorry ctx and this means here that you get kind of really nice types uh, inside the function but you notice that declaring it this way actually breaks infer get server side props type this type props which should be wow true is actually like key string any you can actually fix this by removing this type annotation and you now get wow boolean inside here but then this breaks up here so how do we fix this? Well, we can change this type here and basically wrap this function in some brackets and then say, sorry, not as, satisfies get server side props. And what we end up with is props is now typed as wow boolean, but we still get all the inference inside the function. So we have context, which is now we can say ctx dot whatever, we still get types there and props wow true if we change this to wow uh, string for instance then that's going to change down there this is really really impressive stuff from the typescript team they've noticed that we needed this operator for some really small use cases and they've gone ahead and added it it doesn't feel like it actually bloats your options in terms of typescript and you're really only going to need it very very rarely but when you do need it then you'll need it a lot you notice with that get server side props that's a pattern that you would use through throughout your application if you wanted to build an API like that. And now as of TypeScript 4.9, you can do it to your heart's content. 
I'm super happy with this release. I think they really smashed it out of the park. They listened to user feedback. This satisfies operator. I knew about it for a long time as well, and I was praying it would go into a miner eventually. And they added it. It's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining along. If you enjoyed this, then you will love my TypeScript course called Total TypeScript, which you can find at totaltypescript.com. Please like and subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm going to be covering all of TypeScript updates and a load of other stuff to do with TC39, anything you need in terms of JavaScript and TypeScript. I'm your man. I'll see you soon.